We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Great to see you again after several days, and I hope you had a good time here in Katowice. My name is Agata Konarska, and I have a great pleasure in welcoming you, all of you gathered here in the International Congress Center in Katowice and online, of course. It's my honor to welcome you to the closing ceremony of the United Nations Internet Governance Forum, IGF 2021 which was held for the first time in Poland and organized by the Prime Minister's Chancery. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for participating in such large numbers and for co-creating this important event. Over the past five days, almost 10,300 people from 175 countries have participated in Forum in Katowice and in front of their computer or smartphones screens. This is one of the best results in the history of the UN Internet Governance Forum. We hosted experts, politicians, representatives of science, business, NGOs and technology companies from almost all continents. They came with one goal in mind, to talk about the future of the Internet and how to manage it. Goodbye time is never easy, ladies and gentlemen, but it is about time to move on to the closing ceremony of the Internet Governance Forum, IGF 2021 in Katowice. Today, with us at the closing ceremony, we have very special guests. Maria Francesco Spatolisano, Assistant Secretary General United Nations. Janusz Cieszyński, Secretary of State and Government Plenipotentiary for Cybersecurity, Republic of Poland. Krzysztof Schubert, Republic of Poland, Platinum Potentiary for UNIGF 2021. Yasushi Kaneko, Minister for Internal Affairs and Communications, Japan. And Huria Ali, ICT Minister of Ethiopia. Thank you for being with us. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, we also have special cultural guests the Shlonsk Song and Dance Ensemble and the Miners Orchestra, whose, uh, I believe, unforgettable performance will make even harder for you to leave Katowice. We think also you all appreciate the efforts of the organizers who, in this difficult times uh, for organizing such an event like this, meet the challenge. They took care not only about the content part of the forum, but also of the safety of its participants. Thank you for it. <clears throat> Next year, IGF 2022 will take place in Ethiopia. And I hope that even there you will remember our meeting in Katowice with sentiment. You will? I hope so. Thank you. In a moment, so, ladies and gentlemen, we will start this official part of the closing ceremony. But before, we hear from the officials. First, we will hear from stakeholder group representatives and also a cultural performance will open and then close the session. So, as I said, we start with closing statements from representatives of stakeholder groups. As first, on stage will appear youth representative, Emilia Zalewska, Polish Youth IGF, who will take the floor now. I'm inviting you, Emilia, on stage. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me here on this stage. I would like to thank you for this opportunity to share a few words at this closing ceremony of this year's IGF. I must say it's a big honor to stand on this stage as a youth uh, representative, and I think it is also a big responsibility to represent a group, especially as diverse as youth are. 
So that's why before this speech, I asked my colleagues uh, from the project with whom we organized the Youth Summit this year on the day zero of the IGF, what messages they would like me to bring up in this speech. So as I have a very um, short time for that, I would like to share just one of them with you. Because the motto of this year's IGF is un Internet United. And if we want it to be more than just a slogan, but an idea that would be actually put into the practice, we need to remember about one thing, and it is the inclusion. Without the inclusion of all voices, all perspectives into the discussion, there is always a huge risk of staying just in one's own bubble and leaving others who are not in this bubble behind. So that's why we, as young people, we demand inclusion. Inclusion in all fields and levels of internet governance. We are asking to be heard because we have a lot to say. And I think that this year's Youth Summit is the best example. We also want to be the voice of other vulnerable groups, marginalized communities, who are not much represented in forums like this or in other forums. There are still millions of people who are un unconnected and cannot benefit from what opportunities the internet offers. Millions of people with disabilities or non-English speakers, they just can't use internet because of lack of a solution that are tailored to their needs. So that's why we, as young people, we would like to advocate also for them, for their inclusion, and we want to draw the attention of the IGF community to the challenges those people are facing. So just wrapping up my speech, I would like to thank you for the opportunity we got this year to organize the Youth Summit with the support of the IGF Secretariat and the host country. I really hope that the idea of increasing youth inclusion will be continued upon the next editions of IGFs in other countries. I would like to finish this speech with a thought I also shared at the Youth Summit. We, the young people, are inviting you all to our table. And we hope that we will also find a place waiting for us at yours. Thank you. Emilia Zaleska, thank you very much for your remarks. I hope now that the private sector representative, Ms. Maria Fernanda Garza, CEO of Orestia and first vice chair of International Chamber of Commerce is with us online. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, thank you very much. Hello. Excellencies, distinguished stakeholders, representatives, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the opportunity to address you on behalf of the International Chamber of Commerce as representative of the private sector. We came together in Katsovica and virtually this year for the 16th Internet Governance Forum under the theme Internet United. And the private sector interpretation of this theme was very clear. Keep the internet whole. Discussions over the last four days have underscored our strong commitment, as the youth representative just said, to ensure these words do not remain an empty slogan, but translate into strengthening multi-stakeholder partnerships and concrete policy actions. We must work collectively to ensure that we keep the internet open open, expand connectivity, and ensure meaningful access to the internet and digital technologies for all. Keep the internet flowing. We ensure all citizens and companies can realize the full potential of the internet by enabling the adoption of new technologies and the global movement of data that supports them. And third, Keep the internet safe. Seek meaningful and effective ways to curb the ever-increasing cyber threats. Ensure that users have adequate privacy, data, and IP protection, and that rights that people have offline are also protected online. Businesses worldwide 
recognize the absolute imperative in both moral and economic terms to act on these policy commitments and play our full part in enabling an inclusive digital future. But business does not operate in a vacuum, nor can it act alone. Effective digital collaboration between all stakeholders is vital in achieving our shared goals. And there is no better place to forge cooperation and partnership than at the IGF. This is a truly unique forum where all of us, business people, government officials, civil society representatives, technical and academic experts can come together for open and frank discussions, guided not by our national or stakeholder interests, but by our shared desire to find common evidence base and globally interoperable policy solutions. Each stakeholder community will leave the IGF today with a better understanding of the needs and ideas of others. This open environment is the best way to provide governments with evidence and information needed to develop a fuller understanding of the issues and appropriate policy options they consider. The IGF does not end here. Our work only begins. Ladies and gentlemen, the business community is your committed partner to build the internet that works for everyone every day, everywhere. Thank you. Thank you very much for being with us and for your closing statement. Let me invite now uh, very warmly to the stage uh, civil society representative, uh, Ms. Sonia George, Executive Director, Alliance for Affordable Internet, Head of Digital Inclusion Web Foundation is with us. The floor is yours, please. Thank you, thank you all. Uh, thank you for having me here representing civil society. Um, I wanna start by saying that I am very hopeful after this IGF. I'm hopeful from hearing Emilia. I'm hopeful from having heard many of you during the uh, comments session. And I'm hopeful because one of the things that distinguishes IGF in my view, is the fact that we can bring not only multiple voices, all the different stakeholders, but voices that care. We're not here just to accept the status quo. And I think civil society is very important in that, but so are every single of you. It's not about the status quo, otherwise we wouldn't be here. The world is not connected yet. And most of those that are unconnected, we have a long way to go. So what I wanna say is that I'm hopeful because I think we can not only connect humanity, but connect humanity in a way that is sustainable. Just like many of you spoke about this week, we can think about sustainable access and being digital activists, digital providers, digital creators, digital thinkers and policy makers, while at the same time thinking about our earth, thinking about the environment and climate. We can be agents of change and making sure that we contribute to gender equality, not just gender equality in general, and I mean digital equality. I want to make sure that next time we come to IGF, I see a very large percentage of women, of young women, of women from different countries, of girls being represented, women and men from around the world bringing their voices together for a world that is a better place. A place where women and men in rural and urban areas can afford internet, can have meaningful connectivity with the highest quality possible, and also have the skills, the content, the content in multiple languages, the capacity to sustain digital ecosystems that they deserve. We owe it to ourselves and to our communities to do better. We're not there yet. We have a long way to go. And I urge you all not just to join us here at IGF, but join us every single day, every single month, every single quarter. Think about the communities that we are here thinking about and we want to connect. We owe it to ourselves, to them, 
to connect humanity and make it well, safely, privately, and in a way that people can use their agency to define their livelihoods. That is the vision that I hope you can embrace as private sector, as civil society, as governments, as academia. Make it meaningful, make it purposefully, and we are here to help you and to be partners in this journey. So join the journey, and I hope that we can all meet again in a year in Ethiopia, a very important journey to a very special country of the world, where in a continent that so much still needs to be done, we need all of our strength together to make change possible. So join the force and a luta continua. Thank you. Let's make the change possible. Thank you very much for those important words. May I invite uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, technical community representative, Jeran Marby, CEO, ICANN, to say a few words. Uh, I hope uh, Jeran is with us online. Good afternoon. Are you with us? Good afternoon. I'm here. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. The floor is yours then. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to take the opportunity to congratulate the Polish government that despite of all the complexities of setting up a hybrid meeting, this has been a very successful meeting. Uh, so congratulations and thank you very much. I think that many of the discussions during this week has been very interesting and eye-opening. And, and, and the realization that one important requirement for meaning collectivity in any form is the access to an open and interoperable internet. And that when people go online, they need to be able to access content easily and in their local languages, in their own narrative. They need to be able to trust that the internet works safely and securely. They need to be connected to users around the world and they need to be able to seize the benefits of being on the internet. Not only the digital economy, but the, the importance of being able to share information. When I can, we are a part of a technical community, together with other partners like the RERs, the root server operators, IETFs and others, we provide a technical service for a global, in, for a global interest for all of you. And it, it is interesting thing that internet as a technology was designed by users, is maintained by users, and it's actually the future of the internet lies in their users. That's what we have, the multi-stakeholder models that combines people from all different parts of the world, all different languages, and all different steps in the world. And if you haven't been engaged in any of those technical organizations, don't think it's boring. It's actually quite interesting. But as many speakers said, we're not done yet. With about half of the world's population is not connected yet. And we have to make sure to work together can be connected. It's not going to be a business model that connects all those people. We actually have to come together from all parts, businesses, society, governments and other ones to work out a solution to get those people connected. Because at its core, the internet is actually a technical solution. It's a complex network of networks where I can, without, without our partners, plays a fundamental role in maintaining its stability and security. And we all know that a new technologies and new platforms on the internet will change how internet users are using it. And we need to work together and we be able to adopt. But the truth is that the internet has become far too important for any actor to determine who these evolutions take place, regardless if it's a government or a business. And that's why it's so this forum that brings people together from different parts of the world and different parts of life is so important. So we can share ideas, we can understand who works, and really make sure that we put the internet users up in front. Yes, we've seen over the last couple of years that we live in a turbulent time or interesting time. But the function of the internet has worked very well over the last couple of years. And I think you all, and we've spoken about that, what would, have, what have, would the world look like during a COVID if we didn't have a function of the internet? But as many said, we're not done. We're not done because first of all, as I said, half of the world's population is not connected but also that we have to continue to evolve this technology in such a way that people can use their own keyboards, their own scripts, their own language to interact with the internet. Because internet is local and global at the same time. So I want to finish with this, is that maybe the next evolution of internet, we always talk about is technical interoperable. 
Maybe we should work together to make it interoperable for everybody on the earth. It's time for an internet that is interoperable for people, not only for machines. I'm looking forward also to come to Ethiopia next year uh, for having the next meeting. And I'm looking forward to work together with the uh, organizers to make sure that it's going to be a success there as well. Thank you very much. Thank you for everybody who went there. Thank you for everybody who came here. Uh, and I'm really thankful for all the participations coming here. We learned a lot. Thank you very much. It's great to hear that we learned a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, during uh, the five days of this year's edition of the forum, 300 different events, activities and initiatives, as, such as lectures, debates and workshops devoted to the digital world took place. We hope you have really enjoyed and you had a successful time and debate. You all know a spectacular cultural show. I have a great pleasure now to introduce the Polish National Song and Dance Ensemble Śląsk, one of the most recognizable artistic ensembles in the world that was founded in 1953. Śląsk is also one of the world's largest, most original and artistically professional groups which displays the beauty and richness of Polish dance, songs and its traditions. The ensemble has always stood for perfection and excellence and won accolades from art and cultural critics, as well, of course, as the public from around the world. Its artistry and fame has been built by many great artists and educators over time, so that today Śląsk performs over 200 concerts a year. Nearly 300 people belong to Śląska, over 100 of whom are the artists who make up the core ballet and orchestra. Śląsk's repertoire is a treasure trove of Polish culture, which the ensemble has presented and showcased for more than six decades. So now, please give a big applause to Śląsk.
Śląsk, thank you very much. Such a great show. Krakowiak, Kujawiak and Oberek. Three Polish traditional dances you have watched this time. And this is not the end, ladies and gentlemen. As the 16th Internet Governance Forum wraps up in Katowice, following five days of lively discussions, over the course of 250 sessions attended by almost 10,300 participants, um, 2,700 participants here in person in Katowice. Let's then listen to the closing statements about the main outcome and recommendation of the event, the Katowice IGF 2021 messages. What did this year forum result in? What are the most urgent recommendations for governments, private companies, and other digital policy actors? The answers coming just now. Let's start the official speeches of the closing ceremony. I have a great pleasure to invite first to the stage UN Assistant Secretary General, Ms. Maria Francesca Spatolisano, who will deliver closing remarks. Please. The floor is yours. His Excellency Mr. Janusz Sieszynski, Secretary of State and Government Plenipotentiary for Cybersecurity. His Excellency Mr. Christoph Schubert, the High Representative of the Prime Minister for European Digital Policy and Poland's Plenipotentiary for UN IGF 2021. Excellencies, colleagues and friends, here in Katowice and online from around the world. I am pleased to deliver this closing statement on behalf of Under Secretary General for Economic and Social Affairs, Mr. Liu Zhenmin. 73 years ago today, the United Nations General Assembly adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. As the United Nations Secretary General highlighted in his message today, the COVID-19 pandemic the climate crisis and the expansion of digital technology into all areas of our lives have created new threats to human rights. The principles set out in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights remain the key to realizing all human rights, civil, economic, cultural, social and political, for all people everywhere. The last five days of this Internet Governance Forum have been engaging, inspiring, and fruitful. We have been joined by over 10,300 participants for, from over 175 countries who have registered online across all continents of the world. Over 2,700 participants have joined us here in Katowice and over 10,300 registrations, this is yet again another record for the IGF. There were over 15,000 connections and 50,000 social interactions with the hashtag IGF2021, with a reach of five million people, five million people, and over 20,000 YouTube views following the Gatwice IGF sessions. So we are honored to have been joined by close to 200 ministers, parliamentarians, and other high-level leaders from the private sector, civil society, technical community, United Nations agencies, and other international organizations. Over 140 national, regional, and youth IGF initiatives, or NRIs, contributed to the IGF. This speaks truly to the localized, inclusive, multi-stakeholder nature of the Internet dialogue. There are 39 remote hubs that have joined the forum all week online in countries ranging from Côte d'Ivoire Democratic Republic of Congo, Ghana, Libya, Nigeria, Sudan, Tanzania, Uganda, and Zambia in the Africa region, to Bolivia, Colombia, Haiti, and Venezuela in Latin America, 
and to Malaysia and India in Asia. Remote hubs have been a hallmark of the IGF in facilitating this hybrid IGF. There are, they are supported technically by the IGF Secretariat, and among them, a handful are also supported financially by the United Nations. So from these impressive participation numbers emerge important action-oriented outcomes of the Katowice IGF that include the Katowice IGF messages, the IGF 2021 summary, the outcome document of the IGF parliamentary track, the Global Youth Summit Action Points and Report, and over 300 insightful session reports. I urge you to especially review the Katowice IGF messages and give us your valuable feedback and input as part of the distinctive trademark of the IGF, the bottom-up, inclusive, multi-stakeholder process. And I urge you to bring these outcomes into action through your governments or your communities as well as various intergovernmental and international bodies. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the United Nations is extremely grateful to the host, the government of Poland. We thank Poland, not only for their hospitality and generosity, but also for their strong commitment to the IGF. It was in 2018, more than three years ago, when they first offered to host the IGF in 2020. That was eventually delayed, as you all know, for a year until now. But that did not stop them from providing full support to the global virtual IGF that was hosted by the United Nations Secretariat last year. Indeed, the success of this year's 16 Internet Governance Forum is a result of two years of intern intensive preparatory work. And Poland rose to the challenge of the last few weeks with unrelenting dedication and commitment for which the UN is deeply grateful. I would like to take this opportunity to present letters of appreciation to the Prime Minister of the Republic of Poland, His Excellency Mr. Mateusz Morawiecki, as well as to Minister Mr. Janusz Sieszynski and Minister Mr. Krzysztof Schubert. May I request Minister Sieszynski and Minister Schubert on stage, please? We thank the leadership of the Chancellery of the Prime Minister, and we certainly cannot thank enough the dedication of Mr. Pukaluk, Director of Digital Policy, and his admirably unflagging, outstanding team. We also thank all colleagues from the Polish government who worked with us patiently throughout the last years. And I would be remiss if we do not also recognize well enough the outstanding preparatory work of the 2021 Multi-Stakeholder Advisory Group under the able guidance of the MAG Chair, Henriette Esther Eisen. Yes. The MAG has continued to reinvigorate the IGF with this first ever fully hybrid IGF that has stressed the importance of the on-site and online participation and a forward-looking agenda that is more focused and issue-driven. Let me also thank colleagues from various UN agencies, including uh, ECA, ESCAP, ITU, UN Counterterrorism Executive Directorate, the Office of the Secretary General's Envoy on Technology, UNESCO, UNFPA, UNODOC, FAO, UNIDIR, 
UNFCCC, World Bank, WIPO, and others for their active participation. I also thank all UN staff from Geneva, Nairobi, New York, Vienna, and Warsaw for security, conference services, news coverage, communication outreach, remote participation, and technical infrastructure. And finally, I also wish to take this opportunity to thank the many donors for their financial support for the forum, as well as the financial contribution to the United Nations IGF Trust Fund. The United Nations counts on your continued support. Your commitment to a strengthened IGF will be crucial as we look forward to the next year's meetings. Ladies and gentlemen, most important of all, I would like to thank you, the participants, joining us online or on site. For those who are here, you traveled from afar amidst the pandemics, quarantine, and travel restrictions. For those who joined us online, you have dedicated your precious time to join us and engage with these important issues, no matter your time zone. For all the sessions organizers, you have worked hard to prepare for your sessions and prepare your interactions. And we thank all the young people joining us. You play an important role in shaping today's and tomorrow's internet. So a big thank you to all of you. Without your presence, it would not be possible for us to have a track record of 16 years of success of the IGF. Colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, clearly the COVID-19 pandemic has accentuated the role and use of the internet and technologies as a global commons. At the same time, we also witnessed the persistent and widening divides the spike in misinformation and hate speech perpetrated through online platforms, as well as rising concerns over cybercrime, frauds, privacy, security, and human rights issues. Never in our history has the need for safe, inclusive digital environment been as evident as now. We must not forget that the internet, which many of us take for granted, remains inaccessible for 2.9 billion people, especially in developing countries. And as highlighted in the Secretary General's report on the Common Agenda, the Internet Governance Forum remains as the default global multi-stakeholder platform on internet governance and digitalization. It is essential to fulfilling the, mis the IGF mission in closing all forms of digital divides while addressing the policy issues related to the protection of human rights and many potential risks and misuse of the internet. The Secretary General has called for the IGF to adapt, innovate, and reform to support policy governance of the digital commons and keep pace with rapid real world developments. The Secretary General also calls for a global digital compact and a people centered internet. Let us stand united and work together, united as a global community, to ensure that the IGF outcomes contribute effectively to the global digital compact and multilateral processes on digitalization across the UN system. I wish you safe travel back to your homes and I also wish all happy holidays as we approach the end of this eventful year. I thank you. Thank you very much for your speech. May I now invite uh, Mr. Janusz Cieszyński, the Republic of Poland Secretary of State and Government Planning Potentiary for Cyber Security, who is this afternoon with us to take the floor now. Uh, 
Madam Secretary, distinguished guests. I was uh, driving to Katowice today for uh, the end of the IGF, and I was trying to think of something interesting that I could tell you, but it's a very uh, difficult task because, well, you've just finished a whole session of listening to interesting things and, and smart people, so I wouldn't stand a chance. So I was thinking about questions, questions that maybe we should all ask each other. How will we remember Katowice? How will we remember this IGF? How will we remember what happened here? Will we remember it for the first youth IGF and having the people you know, that actually use the internet, not us, talk about uh, have, having their voice heard? Will we remember it for the Rolada, Kluski, Śląski, and Modra Kapusta, the traditional Polish dishes that I hope that as many as possible you had the chance to try? Will we remember it for the Polish music concert that was in Nospr, the pride of the city, a beautiful monument of architecture and art in one? Will we remember it that by, because everyone spoke about cybersecurity, which is something which is on the agenda and will stay there for as long as the internet exists. Will we remember it for what some of what the, one of the hundreds of panelists said? I'm sure that each and every one of us has, has at least one inspirational thing that he heard, something interesting, something to use in the future. Will it be the 2.9 billion people that still do not have internet access all over the world. Or maybe it will be the thing, the fact that the internet is like a Swiss army knife. There are some moments where you can't live without it, but if it's not used the right way, it can be dangerous. Will we remember it for asking ourselves the question of how can human rights be protected online? How can the digital economy and the fact that the world and the te tempo of changes has accelerated so much thanks to the new technology, uh, how will this impact us and, our, uh, and the future generations? Will we remember it for being the last COVID-ridden IGF? I certainly hope so, because despite all the efforts and making it possible to have it in a hybrid way, we all know that we would have loved it to be 100% on site. Of course, with all the benefits that the technology gives us to transmit and broadcast it and have people from around the world to just join in for the five or 10 minutes they're interested in. Will we remember it for the 12,000 donuts that you guys ate? Yeah, they were good, apparently. So, I don't know. And it's my first high-level event in my life, so I'm not even sure if I should give you the answer. I hope that when we will be returning to our homes, we will have a chance to reflect on this. How will we remember Katowice? How will we remember IGF? But I won't leave you wondering about what I'll remember it for. I'll remember it for the efforts of the team led by Krzysztof Schubert, who is here with us, uh, by Michał Pukaluk, who was mentioned by Madam Secretary, by the 900 people that were here and made it all possible. And I would love you to give them a round of applause for the amazing job they did. And I'm not sure if you know, but if you started driving on Monday morning, you would be almost reaching Ethiopia by car. True, check it out on Google Maps, it's true. It's true. And so this is why 
I would like to wish all the best to Minister Huria Ali and her team on organizing the next IGF. And I certainly hope that it will be uh, good and great and we'll also have questions to ask after it. Thank you very much for coming to Poland. Thank you very much for being in Poland for all of the people that are here online. And I wish you a very, very interesting next IGF in Ethiopia. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. May I now invite to the stage Mr. Krzysztof Schubert, Republic of Poland, pleading potentiary for UNIGF 2021 for the closing remarks. Her Excellency, Madam Assistant Secretary General, dear Minister, thank you very, very much for the very kind words. I've been asked by the UN to do this part to show diversity in Polish, so I try to do the summary as much as possible and as short as possible. So I've been asked to do like a summary of the high level panels. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you yet again in Katowice. I have the greatest pleasure to welcome you here in person. Thank you so much for coming to Katowice. Thank you for staying with us for a whole week. That has been a unique experience and especially at the time of the COVID-19 pandemic. Last year's edition was virtual, but this year we had the pleasure to meet all of you here in person on site. Very briefly, ladies and gentlemen, the first high level panel on global recovery led us to some significant conclusions. I would like to be brief and I am very happy to say that all of the documents including the different conclusions will be included in the Katowice IGF uh, minutes and this is a document that will be uh, published very soon by the United Nations and we will be able to reflect on the document and so you will still have a few days until the 20th of December to um, voice your feedback. Right, so the first high-level panel was about the consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic, and we talked about the necessary investment in infrastructure in order to cater to the high internet traffic. Conclusion number two, the pandemic, uh, highlighted the digital divide, the differences in between the different countries across the globe, and how those differences may exacerbate the existing inequalities. Conclusion number three, what is crucial is global cooperation to foster digital transformation. Common solutions should be adopted across uh, the globe. Conclusion number four is that we need to establish multi-stakeholder partnerships and intensify uh, the uh, cooperation between the private sector and the public administration. The second panel was on the Cities United. That was high-level panel Two. And the first conclusion was that large cities across the globe face similar challenges. All of them need to develop their digital infrastructure, open data, the 5G network. And so again, multi-stakeholder partnerships is what we need to promote. Conclusion number two, still many cities are at a stage of implementing smart solutions or even at an earlier stage, and so it is our joint responsibility to help those countries. Conclusion number three, we need to support the development of the local startups, as this is the pillar for the development of cities across the globe. Conclusion number four, smart technologies should be applied. High-level panel three was on creating sustainable value and inclusive society. And here, conclusion number one is that we need to continue promoting a human-centered approach that ensures universal access to the internet in order to enable sustainable development. We need to have equal access to information, but for this, what is necessary are new business models, new management models that we need to work out together. Now, the next conclusion was that the fintech business 
should continue enhancing smart solutions and implement efficient solutions that help the end users benefit from their rights. Conclusion number three was that what we need are new solutions in terms of the management of uh, the internet and the digital space. Small and medium-sized enterprises should be involved in the process. Conclusion number four, multi-stakeholder dialogue during the IGF forum is the best example of uh, collaborative shaping of the um, new uh, digital future. High panel number four, and here I'd like to propose four conclusions as well. New technologies bring along an enormous potential of positive change with respect to sustainable development and integration. But what is needed is a high level of awareness. And here it is important to introduce common standards. Conclusion number two, companies need to be responsible in terms of how their digital behavior impacts the consumers and the society at large. What is needed is to implement more transparent relationship models uh, of uh, interaction with the end users. Conclusion number three is uh, that the developing countries need to become a key element in the supply chain of the production and dissemination of uh, technologies and digital services. And conclusion number four, they jointly worked out recommendations and regulations both at the level of the EU and at a more broader level is a good example of the collaborative effort involving many different countries. It is very important to implement the digital transformation solutions as uh, quickly as possible. High level panel five, building employment conditions for the future of work. That has also been a very important high level panel. Conclusion number one. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic that has changed the global employment market, we need to create new forms of remote employment possibilities in order to um, ensure that all regions have access to the digital uh, services. We need to invest in the capacities in the IT talents locally. Conclusion number three is uh, that a strong position of academia is instrumental in the digital transformation. We need to support the young researchers. Conclusion number four, we need to focus on early education and in particular focus on the STEM subjects. We need to, we need to educate uh, students in terms of how to seek creative solutions to the challenges of the coming years. The next high-level panel uh, brought along the following uh, conclusions. Digital transformation is a source of many new opportunities, but the digital divide in between Europe and other uh, superpowers totals around 1% of GDP annually. We need more investment programs. We need a tighter cooperation between the private sector and the public administration. Conclusion number two is that there are different factors that impact the digital development, including the different financial incentives for SMEs and the adequate legal framework. Digitization of the business processes, efficient infrastructure is what we need. Conclusion number three, the use of e services is uh, crucial at a time of the COVID-19 pandemic. And conclusion number four is that regulations are really important to make sure that SMEs have a level playing field with uh, the giants operating in the market. And finally, the last high level panel seven was government models that promote diverse business development. Here, I would also like to propose four conclusions. No one can be left behind during the process of digital transfer the pandemic has shown it to us how quickly regulations may be implemented, how we can enhance the um, adoption of new uh, digital public services. Conclusion number two is that the government should be um, held accountable for the introduction of uh, the necessary infrastructure. We also need to 
uh, educate uh, students in terms of their creative potential. It's important to tap into the creative potential of the regions. And conclusion number four is that governments need to ensure the necessary circumstances for the development of the private-public partnership, and they need to facilitate access to public infrastructure to the enterprises operating on the market. Ladies and gentlemen. The document I have mentioned at the beginning, the Katowice Protocol draft Katowice IGF messages should be on your account and should be published on the UN website right now as we are speaking. So thank you very much for your time and I hope you had a great time in Katowice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for delivering findings from the HL sessions. And now I'd like to invite Mr. Yasushi Kaneko, Minister of International Affairs, Internal Affairs and Communications, Japan, the host country of the UN IGF 2023, to say a few words. This is in the form of pre-recorded video message that you are invited to watch now. Guterres, Honorable Secretary General for United Nations, Mr. Antonio Guterres, Honorable Secretary of State and Government Plenipotentiary for Cybersecurity, Mr. Janusz Cieszyński, Ministers, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, my name is Kaneko Yasushi, and I am Minister for Internal Affairs and Communication of the Government of Japan. I'm honored to have this opportunity to address you at the conclusion of this excellent IGF annual meeting. First of all, I would like to pay my highest respect to the government of Poland and other relevant people in the country. Uh, I'd like to thank the UN DESA and IGF Secretariat, the Multi-Stakeholder Advisory Group, and all those involved who contributed to organizing the sessions and preparing this profound discussion under the persistent COVID-19 pandemic. Nevertheless, the COVID-19 pandemic brought along chances to reaffirm the power of the Internet. Under the pandemic crisis and even more in the process of recovery, the Internet is taking the role of the essential infrastructure for the daily lives and economic activities of people around the world and has been providing the foundation for building the digital society of the future. In order to enable the world to overcome the COVID-19 pandemic to address global challenges such as human rights protection, climate change and other environmental issues and to achieve the SDGs, what we need is to further promote global digital cooperation and to enable all people to access the Internet and participate in the digital society without concern. Under the leadership of Prime Minister Kishida, Japan is domestically promoting a digital policy called the Digital Garden State City Initiative, which aims at solving various challenges in rural areas by utilizing the power of digital technologies and realizing a sustainable and inclusive society where no one is left behind. On the other hand, it is also true that the Internet has brought along various difficulties, such as the spread of illegal and harmful information, infringement of privacy, and threats to digital security. Therefore, strengthening people's trust in the Internet is one of the themes of IGF 2021, as it is indeed an urgent issue. From that perspective, Japan proposed the concept of data free flow with trust, the so-called DFFT, in 2019. Based on the DFFT concept, we continue to work towards a society in which innovation enables uh, well-being for all people thanks to a thorough utilization of data and with its fully hybrid format the IGF 2021 has become a good opportunity to embody the multi-stakeholder approach where people from all different regions and communities around the world participate and discuss the up-to-date issues of the internet. The diversity and inclusiveness is the central core of the IGF which also underpins the source of internet's potential for growth and innovation for new values. 
This understanding has led us to a strong support of the concept of the IGF Plus outlined by Secretary General Guterres in his Roadmap for Digital Cooperation. And Japan is determined to contribute to, contribute to it by hosting the IGF in 2023 and continuing our efforts in working hand in hand with all the stakeholders in order to continue the efforts this year and further forward our steps together toward the common goals of finding the way to a more inclusive and effective IGF and of protecting and promoting the free, open, secure, and, and interoperable internet. I would like to extend to you our sincere invitation to IGF 2023. Ladies and gentlemen, the IGF 2021 is nearing its end in Katowice, so it's time to talk, to think about next year event, uh, IGF 2020 to begin the countdown. And as uh, the ICT Minister of Ethiopia, Mrs. Yuhuria Ali is with us, I would like to invite you to the stage to say a few words and to invite us to Ethiopia, please. Good evening, Excellencies, Honorable Ministries, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, good evening, and good morning, all connected all over the world. Once again, it's my pleasure to address the participants of this forum. I was told to address the closing ceremony remark, but I would say I am addressing the end of the session, because the next session will be in my continent, Africa, which I am proudly represent here. As you know, as you all know, if we want an inclusive and bright future or a resilient one, we need digital technologies as an enabler. Digital technologies have the ability trust to transform the society and will also help the world to rapidly recover from COVID-19. We are concluding this year forum while connectivity and sustainable development are facing a new growing challenge such as COVID-19 and of course opportunity like a new shift to digital solution to remain connected. On behalf of the, on half of the planet or the world remains unconnected, women and girls, elders, people with disabilities, indigenous population, and the economically disadvantaged are among the unconnected. And this makes connectivity a pressing global issue and exceptionally critical for Africa. As it has always been said, connectivity has become a core enabler to economic development, job creation, poverty reduction, and the most countries understand connectivity as a critical factor to achieve a knowledge-based economy. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, however, our continent Africa is a critical at critical time where most of the population remains unconnected. We are in a time where the digital ecosystem has become more complex. I'm sure for the last few days, you and the participants have made a lot of progresses in framing and recommending policy issues that will address the pressing issues that we are facing today. We are also in a very critical time where policymakers and other stakeholders need to collaborate further, address the challenges, and explore opportunities. It's obvious that the issue of connectivity and power will remain a development challenge, especially for our continent, Africa. I am arguing the community diligently to keep working and provide frameworks 
that help us to address challenges in connectivity and power. Finally, I would like to take this opportunity to, uh, to reassure Ethiopia's commitment to make IGF 2022 a success and I request your solidarity to continue addressing the challenges in a sustainable way. I would like to thank all higher officials who made this incredible forum, all participants, all beloved and respected Kato Visa people for your very kind hospitality. Me and my colleague enjoyed Poland very much. I look forward to welcoming you all to Addis Ababa for IGF 2022 the most beautiful city with much of diversity, culture, and much of foods. Thank you very much, Jen Kuya. Visit the cradle of mankind, where the mother of humanity took her first steps. The land that gave coffee to the world, Ethiopia is rich in history, wildlife, awe-inspiring landscapes, adventure, home to nine World Heritage Sites, and a stunning diversity of people. The birthplace and headquarters of the African Union, Ethiopia is the hub of Africa. An ancient land with a modern capital city, Addis Ababa will thrill you with its exciting nightlife. Step back in time and marvel at the 800-year-old monolithic churches of Lalibela, carved out of solid rock and considered to be the eighth wonder of the world. Ancient Aksumet Empire is the home to the legendary Queen of Sheba. You can walk amongst giant obelisks and visit Aksum Sion, the final resting place of the Ark of the Covenant. Gondor's 17th century Gothic castle was home to King Fasil. Here, people still get baptized in his pool. Take a relaxing ride on the beautiful Lake Tana and witness the source of the magnificent Blue Nile. The roar of the falls will fill your heart and the secrets of the hidden islands will fill your soul. The walled city of Har is the fourth holiest site in Islam. Immerse yourself in the colorful traditions of a unique culture, wander in the footsteps of the French poet Rambo and even feed the hyenas by hand. Take a leisurely cruise down the mighty Omo River or brave the rapids if you dare. Climbing the vast mountain ranges in Tigray will lift you to places few have ever seen. The hottest place on earth is the Danical Depression. Be mesmerized by the otherworldly landscapes painted in glorious colors. Camp overnight by an active volcano or follow a caravan of camels along the salt route. Trek through the Simeon Mountains Hike to the peaks of Ras Dashan and marvel at the dramatic rock formations dubbed the chess pieces of the gods. Ride through the many parks, fall in love with the beauty of nature 
and marvel at centuries-old trees. In Sofomar, you can explore stunning caves by following an underground river through a series of majestic interlocking chambers. Relax your body and renew your spirit in our many natural hot springs and luxurious spots. You can track more than 80 indigenous animals through the lands or spend the day bird watching. With over 800 species, Ethiopia is truly a bird watcher's paradise. The copper waters of Lake Langano is a perfect spot for a swim. Enjoy the vibrant Addis nightlife where you can wine and dine on cuisines from around the world. Be entertained by live music from the traditional to the modern and dance the night away at pulsing clubs that go on all night long. From five-star hotels to backpackers' hostels, Ethiopia has a wide range of accommodations catering to all kinds of travelers. With daily Ethiopian Airlines flights to a range of domestic tourist destinations and rental cars readily available, traveling within the country is easy, safe, and convenient. Ethiopia, where hospitality is a way of life. Come see for yourself. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us to Ethiopia, to IGF 2022. And now an outstanding ambassador for Polish culture and tradition will perform for you again. Ladies and gentlemen, give a big round of applause to Śląsk.
Tańce podhalańskie, uh, dances of the Polish Highlanders. Highlanders just living 100 kilometers from here in the Polish mountains, in Tatra mountains. Śląsk, thank you very much for this uh, incredible visual experience and a beautiful uh, show, especially for you, for guests and participants of the IGF 2021. As now, it's really time to say goodbye, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, may I invite again to the stage Mr. Krzysztof Schubert, uh, who will thank to all the organizing team for delivering IGF 2021. Yes, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to close our ceremony. So it's a very good moment to invite and join me on, on stage uh, director uh, Wojt, direct, um, direct of the NASC, National Research Institute, NASC, Wojciech Pawlak. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, to organize those, those days, such an event is quite challenging. So there is a lot of people behind the scene which were been with us all the time. So now I would like to spend a few moments and invite them, just few of them actually, because there was a tens of them, to be honest with you, working very hard all the week, being behind the scene, being behind the screens, monitors and stuff like this. So they've been working very hard. So I would like to now spend a moment and show you the top 12 of them. It was very difficult for us to choose which to present together with the director, but now I would like to show 12 of them, lead, leading by the leader of the group, which is a Michał Pukaluk, director of the, <laughs> yes, director of the Kancelary of the Prime Minister. Thank you. And now the team from the Ministry, from the Kancelary of the Prime Minister, Anna Podgórska. Przemysław Typiak. Ewa Świtek. Karolina Brudek-Slegers. Aleksandra Weinziger. Wiktor Skwarek. Karol Michalski. Piotr Majewski. And from the National Research Institute, NASC, Anna Mai. Maciej Groń. Bartosz Loba. That's the team behind the scene. That's the team. Thank you very much. So thank you again, and please give them the really big round of the applause. Thank you. And it's also a good occasion to make a family photo. Maybe you want to join us, the representatives of the IGF Secretariat, the host country organizing team, just to make a photo to remember how it was in Katowice. So if you want to join us on stage, please, you are welcome to. This is the time to make a family photo and again to make a big applause for the great organizing team. Thank you. Yes, please, Minister. Assistant Secretary, can we ask you to join us? Well, ladies and gentlemen, in this way, the closing ceremony is nearing its end. The IGF 2021 goes down to history. We believe it was a place of open and real debate about the future of internet platforms, as well as a number of other issues. We hope also you had, a, as it was said, wonderful time in Poland. I would like to thank you for being with us here in Katowice in person and also all the participants that joined us online. Have a lovely evening and please also have a safe trip back home. Thank you for your attention. And when we will make this beautiful family photo, then I would like to invite also on stage a miners orchestra from Szczyglowice who will say goodbye to you here in Katowice. Thank you. It's okay.
Beautiful smile, last one, last photos. Thank you very much, thank you. Thank you for joining us on stage. Thanks a lot. And now it's time to invite to the stage the Miners Orchestra from Szczygłowice. Zapraszam panów na scenę. And it's really time to say goodbye. Thanks again, thanks for your attention, thanks for being with us, and see you next year in Ethiopia. Thank <laughs> you.